her best-selling memoir, Diary of an MP's Wife, Sasha Swire, wife of former Foreign Office Minister Hugo Swire, lifted the lid on what is likely to be a political plus one. And her gossip about the inner goings-on of politics <laughs> seemingly spared nobody. She said Michael Gove was the most volatile member of the government. She also said that Dominic Cummings was a stark, raving, mad Rasputin. <laughs> And that Boris Johnson has no political identity or proven ability to grasp difficult questions and decisions. Goodness me, well, Sasha joins us now for her <laughs> first TV interview. Could be her last. <laughs> <laughs> certainly could be. Have you, I mean, have you had any reaction from Boris to that description? Um, no, I haven't had any. I, I haven't had re any reaction, really, from anyone. I mean, no-one wrote me a letter or... Um, I mean, a lot of people wrote me letters, but I got no letters of complaints or emails. So mm. I think politicians um, come with a Teflon coating, so... Uh, I think they have acres and acres of stuff written about them. And actually, th this is not a um, vicious book. It, mm. it, it's, it's, it's a... But that's quite a serious mm. point. And when you look at where we are right now with the pandemic and issues and go back as far as Brexit and, you know, the ability to make a decision, it is a criticism of Boris Johnson. A lot of people have levelled that at him. And you've said it outright. You've kind of summed it up. And a proven ability to grasp... ..has no political identity or proven ability to grasp difficult questions... And decisions. That's very worrying when somebody's prime minister of a country. Well, I, I think Boris, like all politicians, have been on a journey, and you know, I, I think I don't know when that's from, but I think that's from midway. This is this is over a decade, so that might have been mid midway through. I, I do think Boris is one of the most extraordinary politicians of our generation. Um, he is, uh, you know, I, I've been around. My father was a politician. He was. John Knott, mm. he was secretary, mm. defence secretary during the Falkland War. And, um, you know, I, I've seen more politicians come and go in my life than practically anyone. And uh, he, he just is remarkable. Mm. He has this uh, amazing resilience. Mm. I mean, you, you've got to understand what he's been through. You know, he was mayor of London and then he was, mm. you know, he got Brexit done and then he fought a landslide election and then he got married, got divorced had babies, nearly died, you know, he, he is... Not many people can bounce back at that level, so you have to give him points for his stamina. But and... I was quite interested in what you, you, you say in your book, that he's sort of motivated, one of the reasons why he wanted the job is a sort of rivalry and a jealousy... Uh, over David Cameron, which just doesn't feel uh, like a healthy intention. Well, really, I mean, why you I want mean, that's politics. Minister. You know, politics is all about um, friendships and enemies, and um, it, it's competitive. It's it's a very competitive environment, and mm. you know, they 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 are of that generation of politicians, and they both wanted to be prime minister, and one was, and then the other one was, and you know, one was up, one was down, one was up, one was down. That's it. That's. That's so, with, so a lot happens. of them, it's, it's sort of ego, is it? Uh, well, I, I think politicians get a bad rap, to be honest. I think most of Certainly them... Certainly in your book. <laughs> a lot of them do. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, There's about I, 400 I, pages of bad <laughs> rap here. No, but it's not really bad rap. It's just sort of... Mm. I, I think I humanise them. Mm. I mean, my book, you know, most political books are really dull. You know, I pick mm. them up to go to sleep. <laughs> you know, if, I, if I've got insomnia. And this is just a sort of... It, this is, like, brings in surround sound, it brings in colour, it's what they I... talk about when the cameras are off, it's well, the that, is, that and... is the unique nature of, of the position of you writing it, isn't it? Because, mm. as you say, political books are often written by the person wanting to leave some kind of statement or legacy of yeah. what they've done. It's the autobiography after they leave mm. power. You're there right in the middle, daughter of a, a senior politician, married to one, worked in politics yourself, worked as a journalist. It, it's a, it must be a unique position to observe intense mm. politics because people are next to you and around mm. you all the time, but they're not necessarily talking to you as the yes. wife, are they? No. Well, as a wife, they talk over you. I mean, yeah. I, I can't... I mean, this book is full of men talking over me, I promise you. <laughs> but, um, no, I... So essentially, I, I've always been a diary writer, and I think mm. everyone should be a diary writer because um, it's a really good discipline. It, mm. it, I, I've always observed people, and mm. it, and I've always, you know, and I've been a journalist. So mm. I've, I, it's. It, I, what was the question? Sorry. You, you, uh, you, 
I don't... I, 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 even <laughs> I forgot it. No, no it's I, your unique position, and yes, I suppose, why it, did you want to write it in that way? Because I, I, we... I tell you, I write it because I'm mm. a compulsive diarist. Yeah. I'm an addict. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's actually part of my day. Mm. I, I get up, I wash my and you teeth, make I write my diary, you know. Yeah, I... and our diary would be, <laughs> we brushed our teeth, yours is that much bigger. Yeah. We, we've, of course, seen um, the terrible events and the loss of mm. life of David Ince, and, and that's brought back, just as Joe Cox did, the vulnerability of politicians. Did you ever have any fear in amongst this teasing, as you call it, and, and scandal and gossip going on? Did you ha ever have any fear for your husband? Um, every time my husband went to his surgery, I didn't know whether he was going to come back. I genuinely mm. had that feeling. Mm. And I think... I'm actually quite... I'm actually really cross about what happened to David Amos right. um, because I, it, things should have changed after Joe Cox, and they didn't. And In I what think, sense? Well, I think, I think security should have been tighter around mm -hmm. surgeries. Surgeries are a real problem because politicians don't want to stop because it's their first line yeah. of... Um, yeah, we, you, you, where you... we need to remember there's a, there's a, uh, someone's been charged and there is a case, so we should be sort of careful. Yes, to... yes. But, but we I'm... know yeah. where the... the... No, but I'm yeah. just, I'm just talking from yeah. my, my husband's perspective and, and as a wife. Um, and I, I just think public discourse... Um, mm. needs to be better yeah. around politics. Yeah. Um, because it, it affects democracy if... Mm. You know, if you don't like your politician, you can vote him out. Mm. But for, uh, until that time, he, you know, he's elected to, to, to make decisions on your behalf, you know, yeah. so... Can he I, should be safe. He should be he safe. He or she it, should be it, safe. It's really... Yeah. Can, can, can I pick up what, uh, just a, a separate issue? I mean, we, there's a lot of talk about, you know, you've touched on it a bit there, the role of women in politics. And and I'm sort of intrigued by the culture that sits in politics. One thing you, you talked about in your book, which I know you, you mean it probably as a light-hearted sort of anecdote, but I think your husband was in a room in somewhere where they were discussing which female politicians they were, were beddable or not. Mm. And when you read something like that, and we see the debate that's been going on on this show and everywhere about misogyny in the country, should we be worried that those kind of playground conversations are happening at the very top of well, our I, institution, the very top of our country? I think, you, you know, I think politicians are, are human, and I think if you went into a pub, you know, you just hear the same conversations. I, I mean, the conversation, but, but the other conversations, that, 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 those conversations have to stop because that's where misogyny and disrespect But do you think men are ever going to starts. stop talking I about have. the women I've, they I, fancy? I have. I think some men are. I think many well, men are changing their behaviour. Well, that's, that's all for the good, but, you know... I mean, we have to be realistic here, you know, conversations between people. I mean, this is not public conversations, mm. you know, so there is a, a mm. sort of difference. Um, but, yeah, we've all got to speak... Everyone's got to treat with everyone with more respect. Mm. Uh, I mean, if that was to happen now, and I don't know when that went, you know, how far ago that was, but if that happened now, you supposedly you would... But do you, you think women probably... don't go in a corner and say, he's quite hot? Well, I, well, do they? Well, similarly, well, I don't know what they say about me, but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think but, they do. But, I think you they know, do. Similarly, I think women it's should a also. Of that. You know, I, think I think we should it's all be aware. a version of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do think women do it too a bit, <laughs> actually. Uh, well... I couldn't possibly call. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you this morning. Uh, and thank this you very has much. It's now been released in paperback, it has. hasn't it? So it you has. can read it for yourselves. Thank you Great. very much. Thank indeed. you. Thank you, Pony.